What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Progressive Gentleman Podcast. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Dan. I'm Matt. And, uh, you know, thanks for taking the time to listen to us nerd out about music. I feel like I haven't said that in a while. I feel like it's been a couple episodes. Has it? I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't you know. just have like a natural flow that I just like <laughs> follow along. So <laughs> usually, yeah, usually it just rolls right off the tongue, but I feel like the last two times, the two concert review episodes that we just did, I don't think I, I don't think I said my little catchphrase, you know, <laughs> not that we ever officially established that as a catchphrase. It just kind of naturally became <laughs> the catchphrase. Right, so. But you know, we'll bring it back. Uh, bringing it back. Speaking of bringing things back, uh, due to popular demand, we're bringing back the Hidden Gems episodes. Uh, that's what this one's going to be. Uh, if you don't remember, this, ep- these episodes are kind of our opportunity to put some bands that we feel like deserve a little more recognition into the spotlight. Not that our spotlight is super bright, right? But, <laughs> you know, if, if you have 100 monthly listeners, you know, our 200-some subscribers on Instagram, that, that might be helpful. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, just I think just being able to like tell people and put it out into the ether that you know these bands deserve deserve uh, you know exposure and people listening to them is like it's helpful no matter how many or few listeners we may have. But I mean, our listener count's not bad. Our Instagram following, you know, it's 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 getting there. It's getting there. But we have listeners in seventeen countries right now. That's pretty crazy. Oh damn! I didn't know. uh, Thanks to all you all you fine folks out there across the globe. Yeah, we appreciate you. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to listen to us nerd out about music. Boom, <laughs> twice. Again. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, Hidden Gems. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I, I really thought that the last one went well and it was received well. Uh, it's one of our most listened to episodes, so I'm happy to, you know, round two. Yeah, this is one of my favorite segments just because it's like an opportunity for us to like dig into to bands on Spotify or, you know, through like Instagram algorithm stuff or bands that follow us, like just getting a chance to like explore and, you know, visit new music and get to enjoy stuff that we otherwise maybe wouldn't have seen. So it's cool for us too, or at least for me anyways. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like to discover new music, right? And I think this is kind of a cool opportunity uh, for our listeners and for us too. I mean, we like digging into this kind of stuff, but you know, for our listeners who are listening to this episode, uh, you know, discovering some of these bands maybe for the first time or maybe rediscovering, you know, oh, I heard this one song on my, on my, you know, people you might like or, you know, musicians you might like, bands you might yeah. like, you know, feeds on different streaming services. Um, this is kind of a cool opportunity. And we've been doing some other things too. Uh, we we got a TikTok. Uh, I don't know if uh, if anyone's seen that. We're we're basically posting the same videos to Instagram as reels, uh, but we're yeah. kind of we're kind of trying to to use double that. dip, yeah, <laughs> double dip a little bit. But also, you know, use that as a platform to sort of get bands, you know, lesser known bands out there as well. I think pretty much every TikTok video, if it hasn't been a live concert video or something, it's been you know five, five bands, bands you might like. So. We're going to try to keep up with that because I think that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. You know, I, I always like seeing those on TikTok and Instagram or whatever. And Yeah, I've, I've actually like not the, not the bands that we're about to talk to about today, but there have been bands that like I've discovered from other people's like five yeah. bands you should check out. Exactly. And they may make an appearance on our future Hidden Gems episode. So yeah, I just keep spreading the wealth. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but without further ado, let's uh, let's dig right into this. So. The first band we want to talk about, it's a band we actually shouted out, but, you know, it was sort of just a, here's a post of, hey, go check this band out without really digging into it. And I feel like they deserve a little more than that. So, so they're going to be the first band we talk about and that's Empire Springs. Yeah. This band is like, I was, I actually got an Instagram like promoted thing, um, from them at one point, but then I know (laughs) <laughs> your wife Steph yeah, had uh, Steph. had mentioned it and like when I got the promoted ad it was like I listened I heard it and was like oh they're pretty good but like I didn't catch the name and then like it moved on to the next yeah, thing so in my story some of those like I always try to take a screenshot or something if it pops up but I'll, oftentimes I'll be like oh this is really good and then I'll go past it and oh, I'll remember or something you know just yeah. tell myself <laughs> that and then just completely forget half the times I forget I have the screenshots I did that today for a completely different band that I that <laughs> yeah. randomly popped up i was like oh i heard this band and it was a thing and i took a screenshot and it was literally like two months ago um (laughs) but yeah so empire springs yes steph my wife actually 
Yeah, she was the one that like got us to to listen to it outside of like my right. getting the the catered Instagram. Yeah, she uh, sent promotion. me the link, and uh, so got to give her the credit. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, they they I think did it just come out the luminescence? Uh, I th- or was it last year? I'm thinking it was 2021. I can't remember okay. because I was like going through before the episode, just like checking yeah. kind of like albums by each band and, and stuff. Yeah. And I think it was 2021, but maybe it was earlier this year. Yeah. Or so they like have late a, last year. a relatively recent release. It's a full length record. It's called the luminescence. Um, to give you kind of perspective on what to expect. If you check these guys out, uh, you, I kind of get Coheed and Cambria flavor a little bit. Um, yeah. not too much. I wouldn't say this would necessarily be a band that like I would do a one-to-one comparison, but who can you really do a one-to-one comparison? Between yeah. Them? I mean, they, they do so many different things, but, um, definitely if you, I think we even maybe included that in our, in our TikTok slash Instagram reel for, uh, if you like Coheed, you might like, I'm pretty sure Empire Springs was on that. Oh, okay. they definitely were. They definitely were. Um, so I stand by that. I think that that fits. <laughs> Um, but they do a little more uh, into like the progressive metal side of things, almost like a, a like modern contortionist. Like I say, modern, just you know the most recent couple records from the contortionist. Yeah, sort of like clair- clairvoyant on, maybe yeah, even a little bit of maybe language. language. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say you know if, if we're definitely not exoplanet intrinsic yeah. era contortionist, but. Uh, but definitely shades of, of you know, language and, and clairvoyant. Uh, so if you're more into the, like, you know, the, the atmospheric, like, prog, Kind of like rock, spacey, prog, ambient yeah, stuff. Prog rock, yeah. prog metal side of things. Um, I think you really dig this this band. Uh, definitely worth checking out. If, if it pops up on your feed, definitely don't forget about it. Like, like we did. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, go go give these guys a follow. We'll definitely, you know, kind of like what we did with the last one, we'll follow this up with posts and links and all that stuff. So there will be, you know, keep an eye on our story. They'll, we'll have links to their music and um, keep an eye on our page as well. We'll probably post, you know, individual posts. But, yeah, Empire Springs, definitely don't sleep on them. Uh, yeah, not to mention their music, but also, like, their album artwork cover is, it is pretty, pretty sick. Sweet. So. Yeah. They're just all around, like they, you know. I love, the, I love the mix, like purple and black and blue, yeah, like all that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like our like the progressive right, gentleman yeah. like color scheme. So, you know, we're maybe a little biased, but <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But, but yeah, the do you do you have like a specific song in mind about them to or by them to sort of? I honestly like. I just re- I just recommend listening to the album like from front to back. Honestly, like it. Like, I wouldn't say it's, you know, like a concept album in that regard that it's like you have to listen from front to back, but it, yeah, I the, feel like songs do stand alone. I, yeah. I do have one, and that's uh, Drawing Lines, I think was the one I gravitated towards the most. I actually threw it in one of my playlists, and um, when I drive, I listen to random Spotify playlists that I throw together, and uh, that one is in at least one of mine, so I actually listen to it relatively frequently, and uh, it's a little bit. If I'm remembering correctly, it's a little bit on like the heavier side of their of their uh, record, but yeah, I'm, I'm so bad with with track names, and because that's my thing too. Because I listen to it, like I just pl- hit play, and I just like play through their discography, and like I'm and I'm usually like doing something else, so like yeah. I have my earbuds in, and I'm not like looking at my phone to see the track names. But I, I do really like the Luminescence. That was the first one because that's usually like when I'm listening to a band that I've not listened to before, I usually go to like the, you know, title title track track, from the album and then like work back from there. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, for me, the only reason I'm pointing that one out is because I have it like favorited. Yeah. So I'm just assuming that's the one. (laughs) Um, but honestly, yeah, these guys kind of took me by surprise with how little monthly listeners they have. I feel like they deserve way higher numbers. I think they only have like 370. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 378. So Jeez. that's a really good memory. Yeah. Um, so it's like, <sighs> yeah, it's just not, that's, that's like criminal. That's yeah. That's just it's, not, that's not right. Like the production quality of their music is like oh, on yeah. par with Coheed and Contortion. Easily. It's like the bands yeah. that they, I mean, w- 
with with Coheed and their sort of new venture, they're you know, Vaxis Two has a lot of production. So, <laughs> yeah, so let's not let's not say you know on that same part, but like pro- like just quality recordings. Yeah, that's agree, that's 100%. what I mean. Is like yeah, not yeah. with like synth stuff and yeah. like that like sort of like cinematic thing. Which but actually I just worked mean, like, for Coheed and their new record, but yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it doesn't doesn't often work in like heavy music. Coheed kind of gets away with it because they they're not an advertised heavy band, so it's like you expect them to do shit like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on regardless, that's a tangent. And Coheed, and I need to stop talking about Coheed. But like they're <laughs> they're a comparison, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely check out Empire Springs. Probably one of. There are a couple on this list that are probably up there for me. Um, but one of our favorite bands that we've gotten to talk about on a Hidden Gems episode, definitely. I'm yeah. Speaking for myself personally. No, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, it's like they're like with the Hidden Gems ones. It's like I, I definitely listen to a lot of these bands. Like I throw them in my rotation of, of bands, that, like songs that I listen to and stuff. But Empire Springs is like of the hidden gems. They're probably the band that I I throw in my rotation the most. Yeah, out and of that's, all of them, and that's the thing. And these are bands that we listen to, discover whatever that you know. While we're listening to them, we realize that their listener count is that low, and we just think to ourselves, "How?" Yeah, you know. And that's kind of how we build these lists. So Empire Springs definitely falls into that category. Um, For sure. So, yeah, if you're a fan of, you know, prog rock meets prog metal, similar, you know, in the same vein as modern contortionist with a little bit of coheed flavor thrown in, uh, definitely go check out Empire Springs. Uh, yeah. Give them a follow. Sure. Give them a like. We'll we'll link everything. And, uh, yeah, show them some love. This uh, this next band, though. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, we're changing gears a little. It's going to be. Yeah, it's going to we're going to get a little heavier. Uh, a band that you've been pushing to get on a Hidden Gems episode for yeah. a while now. I, this was actually another Instagram one, I think, that I, I got catered towards me, like with the promoted stuff. So uh, the algorithm works. That's yeah, all I can say. It works sometimes. Sometimes it works a little too well, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's a whole different discussion. But yeah. Um, yeah, this one for me, I did not know of this band until you introduce them to me. So this is this is all all you. So go ahead and all say right. the name of the yeah, band. Yeah, this is uh this is Path of Giants. They have a uh, one full-length album so far. Uh it's called Beholder, and then they have the the vocal version and the instrumental version. So if you, you know, you prefer without like the heavy screamy vocals and you just want the like, you know, chuggy riffs, uh they got some for both <laughs> for both audiences. Yeah. Um but this definitely like fits the like progressive fans that are into like Mashuga and Vildyarta or however you pronounce that. I think that's it. Close but, enough. <laughs> um, but it's like in that camp, like very heavy, chuggy, genty, like progressive metal for sure. Yeah. So I actually I, I've listened to them sort of, you know, one song here and there since you you know, told me about them since you started pushing to get them on an episode. <laughs> um, but I had never sat down and just listened to them. I did that today. Um, so this is kind of like, you know, like a fresh reaction, right? <laughs> so Life very is. heavy. I didn't expect how heavy it was. And, you know, you put bands, you, you mentioned bands like Meshuggah or Vajarta as like a comp. The one that came to my mind, actually two came to my mind, but the f- the one that like firmly came to my mind was actually another band that I discovered f- kind of this year that's actually got like a pretty solid following. Um, and I discovered them thanks to uh, Between the Berry to Me. Uh, I think it was, maybe it was Dusty, maybe it was Tommy, I don't know, posted about them as it being their like album of the year last year. And that's Humanity's Last Breath. That's who they remind me of. Oh, okay. Like yeah. heavily, like almost like I honestly, when I was listening to it, I had to double check to see if I was listening <laughs> to humanity's last breath. That's what they remind me of. Like, yeah, both, I can definitely see both that instrumentally and like from a vocal standpoint, like almost spot on to like what I've experienced um, with humanity's last breath. Yeah. Honestly, like I, I definitely get more of the Vildyarta 
sound than Meshuggah. Right. But like Humanity's Last Breath, definitely like I think that of these the three bands that we've listed, that's probably like the closest. Yeah, honestly, of the I, three. I literally it could have been a Humanity's Last Breath like record. Yeah. And it, then the other band that popped into my head was Fallujah. Yeah, they're, they're not like they don't quite as have as much of the like ambient like atmospheric not stuff as that much, Fallujah but, does. But the little but, bit that they do have, like mixed with like the blast beats and the you yeah. know the heavy riffage and like the like deep register, uh, like growls, screams, heavy vocals. Yeah. Whatever. Um. When all of that happens in a row. That's when I'm like, huh, Fallujah. Like I could yeah. see that. So I definitely see some some hints of of Fallujah in there for sure. But That's yeah, it's almost like that. Like it's definitely like, in that vein of like, like tech death, prog death, prog, whatever the hell, <laughs> death, 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 deathy death. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so good though. Like per- it's it's like the perfect mix of technical and just heavy. Yeah. Uh, which. You know, heavy for heavy's sake. That was my thing in like early high school. Just give me something that just is stupid heavy. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> just, just make my ears bleed. That's what I want. And now, you know, now that especially now that I'm sort of moving, as you know, I've said in a bunch of different episodes, like sort of moving more towards progressive rock as far as like my taste goes. Um, I appreciate more. When, you know, when I'm listening to heavy music, I appreciate more like the technical aspect of it. So whenever there's a band that's heavy, but like technical, like these guys are path of giants, um, it kind of like, it's like nostalgic back to those heavy days while still like, you know, I can still enjoy it. I don't know. It's, it's like a mix of, I really love how technical this is, but also it brings me back to my, like, just make my ears bleed days. So it's like, <laughs> it's a mix. It's funny. Cause like. I, I I had just had to double check, but this started as a one man project. Really? Yeah, and then like they eventually like became a full a full band. That's so pretty cool. I'm not sure if like any of the stuff that was tracked was initially like one person made it, and then he just got some people to like fill in, or because huh. if one person made all of this, That'd be nuts. then like the biggest fucking kudos that I can give yeah, a human being absolutely. because it's absurdly good. So good. So. Like that's it's wild. Yeah, and so, that if one person is capable of doing all of that instrumentation, so I'm wondering if like started with like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do the guitar and bass, but then like I need a drummer, and then slowly like recruited people, or if like the one person just did all of it, and then was like, all right, I got a couple tracks, but I'm gonna need some people because like if that's the case, that's just that is sweet. <laughs> I mean. Not to like, not that these are direct comparisons at all musically because that couldn't be farther away from each other. But um, another artist that does things like that is like Pliny. Yeah, that's yeah. Like he he records everything on his own and then like, or at least has. I know he has like they have you know Simon Grove plays bass for him. Uh, I forget Jake Jake. I think it's Howell Jake Howell. I don't remember exactly his name. Plays guitar and he's. I mean he's just as good of a guitarist in his own right which is why I'm upset that I can't remember if I'm it's something like that. His name's Jake. <laughs> um, and I forget who his drummer is. Damn. Oh, Tony something maybe regardless. Um, all f- amazing musicians. I mean, Simon Grove plays in the Helix Nebula, which is another fantastic band, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> Cleany records all like, you know, writes these entire records in his bedroom or his apartment or whatever. And then like, yeah, but at least these like, guys learn all these crazy technical shit and then yeah. they just go tour it live and like that. So like I'm, you know, I'm picturing something like that, except like on a much heavier. Yeah. Situation, you know, much heavier basis. So, yeah, I was honestly like I wasn't sure when I when I told you about them, like where they'd land for you, because I know you like Fallujah, but Love Fallujah. like you tend to skew more like prog rock than yeah. prog metal. So I wasn't sure like where they'd fall in your camp. I'm still like firm, like bands that I've been listening to for a long time, like Fallujah, like the contortionist, like heavy era contortionist. Love it. Exoplanet's one of my favorite records. Um, you know, heavier between the berry to me. Uh, but you know, I used to listen to bands like flesh God apocalypse and, uh, earlier black Dahlia murder and, things like that. Um, 
but then, you know, Coheed has always been one of my favorite bands. So it was always like weird that that was what my mix was. And now that <laughs> I guess in my older age, I don't know. I always blame getting older, but I've just sort of been in more situations where it's like less acceptable maybe to just be <laughs> listening to just like death metal. Um, and I think that's what's sort of led to me. There must be something wrong with my brain because the older I get, the weirder my music taste gets, I think. I feel like, I mean, my music taste is still like not normal, you know, like I (laughs) I don't think like there's many people who would consider themselves normal are listening to like (laughs) any progressive music. Not to say that, you know, that's that might have been insulting to our fan base here. So that's not um, we're right there with you. But um yeah, no, I think uh, to me, weird is good. Like, right. I, I wasn't saying that like weird no, is like derogatory. <laughs> I mean, like, it's different. It's interesting, For unique. Sure. Like, that's the, and yeah. like, the older I, just, I get, the more I'm like, wow, this is wild. They're like throwing in instruments that you don't typically see right, in metal yeah. and stuff. Like, I'm all for that. And like. No, I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm definitely for that too. Yeah. It's just like the heavy for heavy sake music I feel like I've sort of strayed from. Yeah. And then like bands like Path of Giants are heavy, but like also technical. Yeah. To where like, you know, that's that's where my heavy interests lie is like I want like I want stuff like that. Bands yeah. like Path of Giants, bands like Humanity's Last Breath, bands like Fallujah. So, you know, if you're into any of those bands, um Path of Giants is definitely one that you need to check out. Definitely give them a follow, give them a like, check out their music. We'll link everything for them and everybody. I'm just going to keep saying that though. Yeah. I remind you. Um, yeah. And Beholder <laughs> is the, uh, the name of their album. It's, you know, it's their only full length album on, on their Spotify and they have the instrumental version and the version with the vocals, which yeah. and I just love, listen to both. <laughs> I'd love to give you a track name. But I listened to it like whilst driving or working and was not looking at track names. But every single track, like I didn't skip a single song. It was all just like a sweet mix of technical and heavy. So. Yeah, I think mine is pro- probably either Under Oceans or Gallows would be like the two main ones that I'd I'd recommend like as a starting point just to gauge your your interest to them. For sure. And just to, to stay on the path of criminally, like... The path un, of giants? Unlistened. <laughs> yes. Um, they only have 1,514 monthly listeners. That needs to increase. Yeah. Let's pump it's those numbers. It's got to go up, you know? So, yeah, if you like bands like Fallujah, Humanity's Last Breath, Meshuga, Vajarda, things like that, go give Path of Giants a, a listen and a follow. But, uh... Switching gears, we're just bouncing around here. Well, this we episode's from, got like a good mix it is of like a good different. Mix, yeah. It's like a little something for the whole family. Absolutely. <laughs> bring your kids, bring your dog. Um, <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> getting something. Yeah. So, this next band is, pr- is one of the most unique bands I listen to. Um, it's hard to put them in a box. Because they do yeah. so much weird stuff that, honestly, they're the, I wouldn't say the only band. They might be the only band doing the stuff that they're doing. <laughs> um, they, yeah, they do get very, like, experimental for sure. Yes. But. Um, and that band is Others by No One. Um, you may have heard of them. Uh, a lot of Between the Buried to Me fans, I feel like, have know of them. Uh, people... Did I say between the Barry to me bands or fans? Uh, if you said bands, it registered as fans in my head. So, right. <laughs> so I think Just, you're good. You know, bear with us here. Uh, <laughs> my brain is fried. I knew uh, what you meant. <laughs> I probably said the right thing and it just registers the wrong thing in my head. And that's how, <laughs> that's how fried my brain is right now. But anyways, um, there was a band called native construct that I think we've talked about. Um, at some point, I think weren't they on our uh, last or like on our first hidden gems? I don't think so. No, but, um, native construct has a record called quiet world that I think has sort of like a, almost like a cult following a little bit in progressive music. Um, regardless it's underrated either way, but if you're familiar with native construct and their record quiet world, 
I feel like Others by No One has sort of picked up the mantle. If, if you're familiar with Native Construct, they are no longer making music. They were um, like a Berkeley band, right? Yeah, it was like a like, project for school right, or something. Yeah. Um, but like Others by No One sort of fills that that gap um, in progressive music, in my opinion. The sort of like theatrical... Um, experimental it almost feels like you're listening to like the score of a musical slash play slash crazy some kind of chaotic (laughs) like it's hard to it's hard like i said you can't really put these guys in a box Um, i just checked out their spotify just to get their monthly listeners and i was looking at their description and i love the way they describe themselves it says, imagine if Native Construct's theatrical sound had a weird baby with Haken's vocal compositions, with Haken actually being the insane child of Between the Buried and Me and Sixth. That's funny. <laughs> I literally, like, when I brought up Native Construct, I'm telling you, I have not looked at, I did not look at that. I just assumed, like, that was the easiest comp. Yeah, but it definitely funny. is, but it is funny that, like, they actually included that. <laughs> but also that, like, they said, like, insane child of Between yes. the Buried and Me. It's just like... But yeah, honestly, like, that's that's a very... That's good self-awareness there, because really, I mean, the, the sort of way that they... You know, their writing style really reminds you of, like, Between the Buried and Me, um, but then just their sound reminds you of Native Construct, and... You can definitely get, you know, Max Moberry's vocal. You definitely get like Haken vibes from them. Yeah. And I, uh, I think if, like if you're into sort of a, like that kind of more musical side of like the prog rock, prog metal stuff, um, this is definitely a band to check out. They definitely get very theatrical with it. And uh, like... I mean, it definitely gets, like, weird at times, but I think to me, like, that's what makes it so cool and so different is that they just, like, you know... It's it's, not just a normal prog metal song, Yeah, it's not just, like, the guitars have time signature changes. It's, like, it goes from, like, heavy and, like, growling, like guttural vocals to like like a bar uh, scene. Yeah, to, like, (laughs) an upbeat, like, musical number, and you're, like... What the? What just happened? Is this some, a different like some, song? Some character from the from the underlining story, like, is all of a sudden just talking to you, and then it's like drops into some crazy, like, is like, are the speakers melting? What is happening? <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, yeah, it's 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 very interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, they just dropped a new record, book two, where stories come from. And uh, if you're not familiar, book one, Dr. Breacher, that was, I, it is a rec. I mean, there's only three songs, so you almost want to call it an EP, but it's also almost like 40 minutes long. And there's like a <laughs> 20 minute song on there, which definitely check out the 20 minute song. Um, it's called Dr. Breacher and the Time Travel Anomaly. Um, if you want to hear their most, you know, the song, to that song to me is the closest they get to Between the Buried and Me. Um I actually don't know if I, I think I've really only listened to like, that's how I found them. Like, well, I found them and then I've actually met Max before Max. If you're listening to this, you probably don't remember me, but, uh, (laughs) um, I've talked to you a couple of times at shows in Cleveland or maybe Cincinnati, like Ohio shows, whether it was between the Barry to me, Coed and Cambria, I've actually, you know, we, we followed each other on social media for a little while too. And, uh, (laughs) Max was always very nice to me, super nice person. So if you ever see them uh, at any shows, Max is a great person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and a super talented musician. Like, yeah, it's it's wild. So like, good. The vocal, the vocal range. Oh yeah, is insane and like and it's an such additional a unique that, voice too. Like yeah. their voice is very much. Like you almost, it's, it's important, like, you know, Haken, all right. But like that distinctness of like a Claudio from Coheed dropping Coheed again, but whatever. (laughs) And like, but, but not really like, I don't, it's, it's, it's very unique. Yeah. Um, Max and vocals definitely seems like, like they were in like either choir or in plays and stuff and like trained that way because of the just the just the sheer range of oh, yeah. 
of vocals. But so. just their overall talent level, like Max's overall talent level, crazy on guitar. I mean, I I was following, you know, we followed each other on Facebook for a while, and they would drop videos, you know, guitar covers. You know, between the buried and me would drop a song or something, and then Max would be dropping a cover of that song like the next day. Just <laughs> that, yeah, that, ability, that's wild. You know, and, and it's not like between the buried and me is all that easy to. <laughs> no, not at right? all. Especially so, with no other tabs to yeah to go off of. Like you're just doing it off of ear in like yeah. 24 hours time. And, that's impressive. You know, Max has side projects as well, and other bands. Um, just everything that they do is awesome. And just, I, I'm, you know, looking forward to whatever's next. Uh, obviously we just got this record last year, but <laughs> yeah, so it'll you know, probably it, be a little it bit, sort but... of leaves you wanting more and just knowing how talented Max is and all the, uh, everybody in that, in that band has a lot of talent, you know, I'm not trying to just, yeah, you know, just focus single. in, but just, uh, Definitely. I think that's just the nature of like Max being like, like the the front. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just right. like and both just, being vocals and guitarists is right. just kind of like you get you end up getting that limelight. Yeah, but yeah, the whole band is up just, front and center for everything they do, so it's kind of hard not to yeah, sort of zero in on Max, but um but yeah, insanely talented. If you like this is like another thing that popped into my head too. If you liked the new Deer Hunter record, and you were like, what would this be like if it was prog metal and crazy? <laughs> um, I feel like book two is a good. Uh, yeah. Is a, it, a good. Like uh, Deer Hunter on steroids. Right, yeah. Is... It's because like some of the things that Deer Hunter does in Antimai, kind of like the theatrical, more theatrical parts of it. Yeah. Kind of made me think of others by no one. Yeah, I definitely. There is a lot of that theatrical stuff in the new Deer Hunter album, so I can definitely yeah. see those elements in. So, like, I, obviously, like turn to eleven and heavy right, as hell. Yeah, but. there's going to be like, you know, a lot heavier moments, but I just think generally, that's probably you know, if you like the Deer Hunters' new record and also like heavy music, this actually might be the perfect record for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely check it out if, if you just, fall into that category. Yeah, if you're just going to listen to one song and you don't want to spend 20 minutes listening to Dr. Breacher and the Time Travel Anomaly, um, my favorite track on the new record is Right Side of the Brain. Um, one of the catchiest choruses uh, of the year last year, I think, for me. Um, it still gets stuck in my head sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is very catchy. It, yeah, so that that would be a good place to start. And I don't know if you have a different opinion, but... Um, I mean, that, that's probably my, my favorite one as well, but, um, they had that, like a reverie to quell the giants was a good song too, but that's, yeah. a, that's another long one. So trying to give you like a bite sized snippet, I mean, six minutes is hardly bite size, but well, the whole album is an hour and 14 minutes long. So oh, yeah. it's like the longest strap in. Oh yeah. But it's, it's fun though. Yeah. So yeah, definitely check out Others by No One if you're a fan of Haken, if you're a fan of if you liked Quiet World or Native, you know, Native Construct in general. Um, these guys are, you know, sort of filling that void. Yeah. So um, taking the mantle and yeah, exactly. Um, if you like Between the Buried and Me, if you liked Antimai from Deer, the Deer Hunter, definitely check this record out and check these guys out and. Give them a like, give them a follow. We're going to post their stuff next band. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this next band, I think, was this a, like a popped up on Instagram type situation? What was this one? Uh, I don't remember. I don't I, remember. I, maybe it was, did I find these guys or did you? Well, I didn't listen. At least I don't remember listening to them until like oh, it was me. a couple days ago. Me. So yeah, it was yeah, definitely yeah. you that like they showed talked up. me. Like they showed up to me on about a, them, but it wasn't even Instagram. They showed up on, um, like Spotify, like you might like this or something, or I was listening to a band, like a playlist for a band and it got to the end and it just started, excuse me, cycling like similar bands and it popped up and my initial reaction, which after then going back and listening to their whole re like record discography, whatever, 
I don't know. I don't think I agree with this assessment anymore, but my initial reaction was the song that came on reminded me of August Burns Red. So anyways, I don't even think we said the name of the band yet, but Monosphere is the name of this band. Um, yeah. When you first told me that I confused them with Mono Lord, the like, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of like doom metal band. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, they're huge. And then I was like, it clicked. It was like, oh, you said monosphere. Yes. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> monosphere, like singular circle. Um, <laughs> monosphere, yeah, like I said, the, the, I don't even remember which track it was that came up. I just remember taking a screenshot as I do and then normally forget, but this one I didn't want to forget. Um, and in my brain registering, these guys sound like August Burns Red. Um, yeah. Then you listen to their whole record, which is called The Puppeteer, which I assume is a concept record just based on all the song titles. Um, And you're like, wow, this is not like August Burns Red, really. There's moments for sure, but I would almost liken them to like, like Crypto Dira. But Crypto Dira is like... Crypto Deer also isn't that super well known. So if I say Crypto Deer to you guys, <laughs> you're probably like, who? Yeah, um, yeah, referring. It's like when you use the word in the definition. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, Fallujah a little bit too. Like there's there's some of that like heavier tech, you know, blast beat meets tech death meets whatever. Um, but they're definitely heavier. They're definitely a little like Rolo Tomasi. I think they're touring with them right now. Some of the stuff that Rolo Tomasi does, you know, like these guys kind of do a little bit as well. So that tour makes sense. Yeah. Um, I get a little bit of cult of Luna vibes from them. Yeah. Um, not like one to one, but there's definitely like elements there that I, I see like it, it seems to me like it's a pretty, like an inspiration for them, like a band that they all enjoy is kind of, but I do like the role of Tomasi is probably a, a better descriptor because like cult of Luna, like they kind of are like consistently, like I don't think they have any clean vocals and like, they're kind of like consistently heavy. Whereas, I mean, monosphere is heavy, but they kind of like drift into that. Like, Almost like... Almost like Phineas. Yeah, and like they kind of almost like Fall of Troy, like not quite there, but okay. like yeah. they, you know, they kind of drift more into that, like just randomly, but then they go back to being heavy and you're, yeah. it's like... Yeah, I, I, Phineas I think is a good comp. Um, Cult of Luna is a good comp. Um, yeah, honestly, like... There's, Weirdly enough, like this band is the hard was the hard one for me to like yeah. pinpoint a band that they sound like, yeah. it, despite others by no one being like well they're the like, most different. But I don't know for some reason I just can't put my finger on what it's like in they between like. like a band like August Burns Red and a band like Humanity's Last Breath, where it's like they can do the like just brutal heavy technical shit like Humanity's Last Breath, but also have like a slightly cleaner tone riff that sounds a bit like something that August Burns Red would do. Um, so it's like, it's like that mix between, you know, this is not really metal. This is not metal core. So to compare them to a metal core band is tough, but like, yeah, just from like a, like a riff perspective, like I was getting some August Burns Red or just like that style of metal core type of flavor, but like, heavier like everything like they were heavier consistent more consistently heavy than like a august burns red type of metalcore band yeah um so honestly like if you like if you you know if you're listening to these in order as we go and you listened to path of giants and you liked them you're probably gonna like this band too yeah probably because um, they're they're pretty you know they're decently similar um, I'd, I'd say monosphere is like a little like Whereas Path of Giants is very, like, chuggy, like, pretty consistently, but they also have, like, the technical stuff. Monosphere kind of, like, they're almost, like, a half step in between, like, Path of Giants and Others by No One. They, like, don't get as weird as Others by <laughs> no, no One. No, definitely not. There's, but there's they're a little like, bit more chaos. Yeah. They're, like... <laughs> but it's in, it's prog. There's always chaos, but it's organized chaos. I've said that before. <laughs> yeah. You know, progressive metal is kind of, like, 
organized chaos. Like, a band like Crypto Dira is like organized chaos. Like these these guys and the guys in Crypto Dira would probably get along pretty well. Like the, I want to say like a little bit of like Car Bomb. See, I was thinking Car but, Bomb too earlier when I was like listening to it. I I was thinking Car Bomb. Too. Car Bomb. It's not quite as crazy as Car right, Bomb though. Yeah. It's like I, it's like hard to pinpoint them because they're like crazy but not. Not yeah. too crazy, and like, right. <laughs> and they're not as crazy as Crypto Dira either. Yeah, they like Crypto Dira kind of like dives into like super heavy, and then they get like, yeah. you know, they have the like duet vocal. Yeah. Crypto stuff Dira and, is literally or like that's what I've said about them in the past, but they are literally organized chaos. Yeah, they, and I love every second of it, but it's nuts. Yeah, um, these guys are not that crazy, but. Um, still, yeah, like a half step between that sort of frantic, crazy, like death metal tech death, whatever you want to call it. But like, you know, prog. So like you're doing all this crazy shit and whenever you're, you know, doing tech death in a crazy time signature while like switching styles and all that shit, like, you know, it, it can get a little chaotic, but it's organized chaos. So, um, yeah, definitely a half step between like a normal like metal for lack of a better like a a metalcore band in the vein of August Burns Red meets like a crazy tech death band. Like <laughs> Yeah, it's like somewhere <laughs> in that like that in between. It's like hard to pinpoint them. But this is another one where it's like this is one of my favorite, you know, bands that we've talked about on hidden gems just from a personal standpoint i that the puppeteer that record is fantastic yeah i actually like i only just started listening to them because you had recommended them to me but i will definitely be listening to a lot more of them because it was actually like right before we like hit record we were both like listening to the puppeteer and like jamming to it so like i'm I'm looking forward to listening, resuming yeah. after we finish the episode. So Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, this is one of those records that we discovered them this year or else, honestly, in my opinion, this probably could have had the potential to crest our top 10 for our album of the year list last year. Yeah, it, it, it definitely it's that could good have. of a record. So um, definitely go check out The Puppeteer by Monosphere. Um, if you've never listened to these guys, they are another band that's criminally like un, you know, undervalued i think with yeah. 232 monthly listeners yeah whenever you told me that i was that's insane to me yeah because like again this is another band and i feel like all these bands that we're talking about when we do these episodes you know the the quality is there it's not lacking it's not like these guys recorded a song on an iphone right like these yeah. guys are or if know, they did they're really good right, at t- yeah <laughs> teach us your ways that's... yeah but um seriously these you know the effort that they put in the quality is there yeah. If you like the bands that we're likening these guys to, you know, if you're a fan of heavier music, but you also like August Burns Red style metalcore or whatever, you know, these guys are somewhere in the middle. So I think, you know, they could attract fans like, you know, fans that like August Burns Red, but also Humanity's Last Breath, Fallujah, Crypto Dira. Yeah. Um, and if you've not heard of Crypto Dira and didn't check them out the last time we talked about them, check them out too. But uh, Monos- <laughs> Monosphere, fantastic band. The Puppeteer is the record. Go give it a listen. Give them a like. Give them a follow. All the things. <laughs> <laughs> so wrapping up, and I feel like uh, I'm going to at least try this until we run out. But um, we got we to gotta loop in another Pittsburgh band, right? Show, yeah. Uh, Show the local band some love. Uh, The last episode, last Hidden Gems episode, we talked about a band called Nafel. Fantastic band. If you've not checked them out, check them out. They're like Polyphia-ish. You know, they're in that same vein, just instrumental metal. But they did release a song with... uh, Oh, it was, uh, what's his name? Mike Mike from... Mike Semeski or... Yeah, he was this... He did the vocals for Intervals. Yeah, for A Voice Within. Yeah, so, yeah, fantastic musicians, and that song is sick, and all of their music is sick. Go check them out. But anyways, that's not who we're talking about right now. We're talking about a band called Haven State. So this is a lesser-known band in the Pittsburgh area, not that, like, any of the local Pittsburgh bands other than, like, Code Orange (laughs) right now, (laughs) um you know, is all that huge, but these, these guys are 
worthy of of a of a bit more of a following here. So Haven State, uh, they just dropped a record last year. It's called Adapt. Um, I'm trying to think of a comp for them. So honestly, some of their stuff is like in the vein of a band like Delta Sleep from an instrumental standpoint. Yeah. Um, Definitely like that math rock yeah, sound. Yeah, exactly. You know, the prog rock, math rock, just sort of doing cool stuff in different time signatures. It's not overly heavy, um, like instrumentally or otherwise. I wouldn't consider Haven State like a heavy band. They do, you know, some things that are, you know, they'll have some harsh vocals or something like that, you know, just like sprinkled in. But for the most part, and I hate doing this because anytime a band has a female vocalist, I feel like people are always more inclined to compare them to other bands with female vocalists. And like, (laughs) that's not fair, but... I'm going to do it anyways. Um, <laughs> it's almost like a heavier Paramore. Like yeah. Like a heavier, proggier Paramore. Like the lead singer's vocal style on like kind of reminds me of Haley Williams' vocal style. Yeah, it definitely like, I mean, there's a lot of that like post hardcore kind of, so, you know, you're like cresting on that like punk side of, of music and, uh, and like her vocal range is very similar to Haley Williams. So I, I thought the exact same thing whenever I was listening to it is like, they're kind of like heavier, heavier Paramore. It's prog Paramore. Yeah. Um, it, it's proggy. It's like cool time signature changes. Like it's, to me, it's kind of almost like the musicians of Dance Gavin Dance recruited Haley Williams to do vocals. Interesting. Kind of. It's like, okay. kind of like, you know, the best way I think I can describe. Yeah. All right. And and honestly, yeah, even like the instrumentals, like you said, there's just that like, that post hardcore meets, you know, math rock type of sound. Like, you know, they're not down tuning their guitars and just playing crazy stuff. Like it's, you know, they're playing probably in standard tuning and just writing cool riffs in cool time signatures. And, and it sounds good to me, honestly. So, um, yeah, I think like the difference, like when you say post hardcore, you know, you think of like a day to remember and like those type of bands that like, I don't know, they definitely lean more on the punk side. Whereas I think in this regard, like her vocal range sounds like Haley Williams a bit, but like the music doesn't really sound like Paramore. Like it definitely sounds more like on the vein of like Delta sleep. And it has a lot more of that, like kind of math rock sound to it. So it's like, not really like, I mean, if you like Paramore, you'd probably like them too, but this is definitely more for fans of like the, you know, math slash prog rock. They're like, a, like, we've talked about a band called Seder before. Yeah. Um, I would almost liken them to Seder a bit uh, with less harsh vocals, obviously. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, the vocals were yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. less less hard. Um, or like uh, Donovan from Hail the Sun. He has a side project called Nova Charisma. I did not know that, but I love it's Hail got, the Sun. So. It's got, like, a little bit of that in it as well. Well, um, I know what I'm listening to later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, honestly, um I I still think Prog Paramore is the best way to describe them. <laughs> prog more. Um they they have a song too that's not on their new record called Finite. That's probably the standout track for me in their discography. I really really enjoy that. And I think that'll also give you sort of where Prog Paramore comes from like if you listen to that yeah. track. Um but, I mean, who doesn't like, I guess there are people that are probably listening to this, like, why are you talking about Paramore on a progressive metal podcast? I mean, everybody had a little bit of an emo phase, right? Not that Paramore was all that emo either, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I still love Paramore. Yeah, so. there's nothing wrong with Paramore. Grow up. But, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, 
check out the song finite i really like that song and then run off the new record um which is called adapt uh was my favorite track on that record but i really hope i mean they're from pittsburgh we live close enough to pittsburgh i really hope to catch these these guys live i know they play like sometimes uh there's a festival like a local festival um that has like split stages and they have a stage called the Prague stage and i've seen that they've played there i forget the name of the festival i don't know but um i I definitely want to catch catch them live because yeah i feel like that would be cool i Maybe like one of these times they'll open up for like a like a prog band or whatever. You know how they, whenever prog tours or just any tour comes along, they typically get you know that's how we a discovered local band. yeah that's how we discovered Anton Ego as yeah. well. Um, but but yeah, uh, Haven State. We're gonna link all their stuff. Definitely give them a follow. They only have a hundred and four monthly listeners. So everybody we've talked about has like under a thousand monthly listeners. I think only one of them had slightly over a thousand. So, and that's probably others by no one. Yeah. I, th- um, I, th- I want to say path of giants had around that, but I could be wrong. Yeah. But, but it was, it was regardless. Like still very... Yeah. Regardless. Every, every band we've talked about is like criminally underrated. Yeah. And like, criminally, all... like, like they need more recognition. Um, yeah. There's like no reason that any of these bands should have like under 25,000. Right. <laughs> listeners. So, you know, it's, it's honestly absurd that like, that's one thing I think that like Spotify needs to get better with is like, you know, we're getting these like Instagram promoted stuff, like and TikTok promotes those like five bands you should know. Right, and yeah. like, I'm getting all those in my feed, but like Spotify, you really got to like work yeah, to get to that music. And sure. like a lot of people, I don't think spend the time doing that. So it's like, you know, it's just kind of a bummer that all of these bands that put so much time and have so much talent get kind of buried. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Haven State, Prog Paramore, check them out. We're going to link all their stuff. Progamore. Um, <laughs> but that is the last band we wanted to talk about. We try to keep it to five here. Um, we have a whole list of like more bands, too. So yeah. we're going to try to make this a, a slightly more frequent uh, series. Yeah, we've we've been kind of kind of busy, so yeah. we haven't been able to. I know for a, a little while we were doing like weekly episodes, but you know we it's unfortunately tough. haven't been able to. Yeah, it's uh, work and, and yeah. stuff's all kinda, damn day jobs. If you guys would yeah. just support us, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Send us money. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean life's busy, and you know you got a vacation coming up. I just got yeah. back from a vacation. Yeah, I got know. school too. So right, yeah, so. Yeah, Matt. Matt over here balancing work, <laughs> home life, school life, and podcast life. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. My brain is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. You, hopefully, uh, people can uh, bear with me if my brain is not all <laughs> here at some points. Yeah, and, you know, and everybody's everybody's got uh, you know life to deal with, right? Yeah. So we're we're no different. We are, we are only human, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we appreciate you guys listening to this episode. Um, definitely go support these bands, support us too. You know, <laughs> if you, if you like what you heard, you know, give us a follow, give us a rating. Yeah. Uh, and we really like, we appreciate when people like comment and want to chat and stuff yeah. like the interaction with people is, is cool. So like, yeah, we've don't, got, I know some people like have that mentality of like, oh, they're never going to respond and like, I don't want to bother them and stuff. But like, we enjoy interacting with people and like finding new bands and stuff. So, yeah, and we try to respond to everything, any anything that anyone posts that's not the fake like DM us for a promotion. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we try to we try to respond. It might take us a day or two, or sometimes maybe it only takes us five seconds. You never know. But um, if you will get back to you, yeah, if you're a band or in a band and you're listening to this and uh, you want us to check you guys out and talk about you guys on a future episode, please hit us up. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, not it's not just to promote you guys, but also selfishly, we just want to hear the <laughs> music. So um, hit us up or if you know of a band that maybe you think deserves more recognition, uh, DM us, post on, you know, any of the posts related to this episode and we'll definitely check it out because we're always looking for new stuff. Yeah, for sure. So uh, thanks again, everyone. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.